Welcome to Minolta vs. Olympus Part 2. In Part 1, or Episode 1, we covered the differences between these two nearly identical cameras and the general conclusion that I came to at the end of the video was that it really doesn't matter because, you know, my personal taste is going to be different than yours. Now that you're up to speed, let's move on. The Minolta is already at a disadvantage because my 50mm 1.4 Rokor lens has balsam separation on the rear element. This defect will affect image quality and you'll notice that later on. Already? But no one's gonna watch the whole video. For me, the clearly defined better of these two is the Olympus. It is a camera that fits in my hand better, and so it's more ergonomical. And the viewfinder is brighter and larger, so it's much easier to get it up to your eye. Which makes focusing easier, and at the end of the day, you're trying to take pictures that are in focus. So the Olympus wins, hands down. The film I selected for this test was Kentmare Pan 100 a 100 ISO black and white film. All images were captured in automatic mode. Well, I hope so. The first image is of the Olympus from the Minolta, and you can see some of that softness in the image. With the image from the Olympus, you can see that in automatic exposure mode, there is a difference between each of these cameras. We start again with the Minolta, as we will throughout this video. This being of some merchandise at a market, you'll notice it is softer in comparison to the Olympus, which is sharper with more contrast, and there is a distinct difference in the exposure values. We have a side-by-side -side comparison, Minolta on the left, Olympus on the right. Again, much sharper image produced by the Olympus. When we crop in here, you can also see that there is more contrast to the image. Here we have another image captured by the Minolta. Again, soft, less contrast when you compare it to the Olympus. When we crop in tight, you can really see how soft the image is from the Minolta. We'll just scrub through some of these images quick. They're just kind of filler. Um, with a 36 exposure roll and this kind of test, I like to just put each camera through its paces. Even with these images, I find myself gravitating towards the look of the Olympus. They have that crisp contrast that I really like from black and white photography. Here's another image by the Minolta, and again, much softer. Uh, the balsam separation acts almost as a pro mist filter. The image quality loss is noticeable when you compare it to the Zawiku lens. Two photos with different focal range to highlight how the meter handles each scene differently. Of the 72 frames captured, these four are my favorite, and that hits at my average of liked photograph per roll. Another image with a uh, foreground being out of focus and the background being in focus, just to give you an idea of how each of these meters handles the situation. These two images were captured at a negative two exposure value setting. The Minolta being on the higher side and the Olympus producing the image that I was intending to produce. At this point, I felt I had captured a sufficient number of images with the 50 millimeters that I could now move on to the 28 millimeter lenses. The Minolta Rokor 28 is a 3.5 whereas the Olympus Zawiku is a 28mm 2.8. These images were shot off of a tripod and they were on the longer exposure side. 
Even though the subject matter may not be the most interesting, I still felt it necessary to include them so you could get a visual reference for how each camera functions on a tripod with long exposures. Two images side by side, and again we notice that there's a major contrast difference between the two, despite the 50mm lenses not being on the cameras. Image of a rundown abandoned house, 28mm from the Minolta, and the 28mm from the Olympus. And once again, we notice a profound contrast difference between the two. Photograph here of a creek, and both images are all right. Um, there's just a lot going on in that lower left-hand corner that seems to be quite distracting for my taste. Here, the Minolta drastically underexposed the image when compared to the Olympus. I think maybe this is due in part to where I was metering from in each frame. You can see the composition is slightly different with the Olympus. In these photos of what is left of a payphone, the contrast difference remains. Here we have the final frame, and it is of a roundabout in Goldsboro. Once again, the Olympus, much more contrast. Feel free to let me know which one you think is the better of these two from these examples or from your own personal experience. Either way, get out there and shoot.